Hello, family. Thank you for coming over to the house tonight. And just kick off your shoes and relax your feet. Party on down to the SKB. We're kicking. Just kick it. Just kick it. Okay, you don't come to another episode where we're going to be asking the question of... Why are you telling my business? Don't be telling my business. Hmm. Why not? Because a can-can and a can-can, a can-can, a can-can, and a wheel. Now we're off to... Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to the channel. And we're going to be talking about Portia Williams' glorified boyfriend, Simon Gavadio. But first, we want to stop back and update you on, I guess, Portia's trying to put a fire and ignite the sales of her book, The Pursuit of Portia. Uh, seems like they're trying to have another launch, in a sense, to get you all to go over there and buy it. But y'all know, if y'all don't know, uh, I did a review on several chapters of her book. You can always go back and look at that to make a determination of whether you want to buy the book or not but i would say mm, unless you're just trying to support her because who she is and you try to support black businesses that's basically the reason why i did it and to the fact that i want to see what she was saying about r kelly okay <coughs> but other than that we should um look out for black owned businesses doing their thing and try to support them as best as we can but we know sometimes doing business with our own kind can just be a struggle because we think we got it going on and we think we're uh immune to other things that the public want but you don't want to give it to them and this then the third it's just really you need to take a class on getting into business and dealing with consumers that would be great but anyway, these are some pictures that I forgot to include in my last video of Simon's birthday party and who was there and of what Portia wanted to show of who was there. Um, I didn't get a chance to see Lauren, her assistant, or Lauren, her sister. Uh, if we got a picture of Diane, we damn should have got a picture of those two. So maybe they weren't there. Maybe Lauren, her sister, was babysitting. Or maybe the assistant Lauren was babysitting. Who knows? Because we know uh, Mama Diane usually be the main babysitter. And maybe Portia taught her assistant or her sister uh, to babysit while they were out having a good time. Okay? Yes, and what Portia and Simon could have done was just had the birthday party at their house. The house is big enough. The yard is definitely big enough. They would have had the security for peace of mind, and they would have had the outdoor environment. But I guess Portia wanted to go all out for her man, okay, or something to that effect, and we got it at a restaurant slash bar lounge, I guess. But we're going to be um, getting to know what Simon wants us to know about him because all of this is really generic uh, but the magazine that wrote this article up on Mr. Simon Gabalia I'm pretty sure they paid for it uh, for the notoriety to be put out there so Simon can get his uh, blue check as being a vi verified celebrity or, or whatever okay <coughs> so um, you can google simply but head uh, it's a magazine, like I told you, an article, or uh, a platform where they talk about more so the who's who in Atlanta and uh, what they're doing and how they're living and this, that, and the third. But see, if you first read the article itself, okay, it's going to mention Portia name first. And <coughs> see, that's what I'm saying. I don't know why Nene and uh, Portia <coughs> wants to get involved with people they have no notoriety for themselves they have to you know uh i guess get on the coattails of the dresses that their female partners wear <laughs> to be able to be noted noted uh what do you call it notarized not notarized but um what do you call it noted that they are an individual uh entity aside from their celebrity spouses or girlfriends or however you want to look at them but uh yeah i was like why can't these jokers get recognized on their own 
on their own merit, on their own talents, on, on their own fan base. But as we can see, did anybody really know about Scammer? Shaba, Shaba, Scammer. Do anybody know anything about him other than Peter Thomas and uh, Anthony Hamilton and Fabulous and Fantasia knowing about him? Okay, maybe he got a lot of notoriety around North Carolina because Fantasia probably shouted him out here and there or when they get compliments on her husband's wardrobe, they drop, you know, the request down of who actually, or drop the information down of who actually got him together, who was his stylist, who was his tailor, and they got that type of um, rep rapport with the community down there. Okay, but I'm like, okay, when Nene went to that ball, that QC ball that P. Diddy hosted down here in Atlanta, uh, did um, Scammer Shaba, did he take his um, cards? His business cards that he could definitely put out to the masses because he was rubbing shoulders and shaking hands with some very affluent people. Okay, so that's what I get mad about because uh, most of the time when men have their own thing going on, they don't really want to promote your business unless they really, really love you and they really want to see you do well. Usually, it's the all boys club, the good old boys club for the blacks. And they're not going to have their wives around them as much in trying to get a part of their fame. You see what I'm saying? Unless they want to be, uh, unless the men want to show their wives as trophy wives. You know, the wives got to be, you know, looking right. Uh, the attire got to be right. The body got to be right and all of that. Or they really don't want you into their business. But women, we're so, you know, eager to please and want them to be satisfied and want them to be happy. We don't mind that they come off on us and want us to showcase them and want us to introduce them to our criminal crop of fluent people. Because they know women do like their men to look good. And they will go shopping for their men. So I can see how scammer Shaba uh convinced Nini that it would be a good idea that she takes him under her wing and introduce you know her introduce him to several of her celebrity friends or celebrities that she do know of okay and same thing with Portia they, it's sad that they don't realize that they're being used uh because the most notary uh but notarization of who they are was through the women bringing them out in the forefront to say hey this is my man he's a self-made millionaire whatever he got a large clientele for men's wear you really need to check him out because Nene was doing a hell of a good job on putting him out and then gonna say he's gonna be helping me host at the Lanithia Lounge I mean just bringing him on in to the people that she know that are very influent in Atlanta same thing with Portia. Like, when are y'all going to get tired of putting people don't don't want to give y'all the time of day to even rep y'all as their woman or their spouse? But y'all ready to rep, uh, run and rep them out in the community because they want you to do that. And you do it like a, a, a puppet. I mean, they are the puppet masters. Simon and Naomi, they are the puppet masters working the strings on Portia and Nene. And they can't even see it. And that's the sad part. But I'm going to get off that because we're supposed to be talking about Simon, right? But we couldn't miss not talking about Portia because Portia is one put him on more than likely to this magazine, okay? I guess Jet Magazine and Essence Magazine and... Uh, the other black entertainment magazines, the Jasmine brand, uh, they, they didn't want to fool with them. Meaning the companies didn't want to fool with them because they wouldn't know how to really address Simon's good fortune. Because he don't tell anybody really what he do. He don't show anybody what he do. So I could see them not really wanting to do anything with him. And I'm pretty sure, like I said, they paid for that article that was written up. On Simon they just wouldn't give in to him and I guess they're really trying to push the narrative on getting him uh, that verification check but I like man go on and pay two thousand dollars and you can be verified because we still ain't gonna be checking for you like that okay 
But anyway, it goes on to say, oh, perhaps, oh, I'm trying to get it up. It says, perhaps it's no surprise that a man engaged to a Porsche likes cars. Steel, Simcoe, Petroleum founder, Simon Gobali of the Fence say, of Real Housewives of Atlanta, along Portia Williams, has auto, or takes auto enthusiasm to an extreme. I can't, I might need to go, I don't know why I can't open it up. But it's just the point that, starting the article, you had to tell us about Portia Williams and her resume. Before you got to Simon. As a car enthusiast, as a car lover, you know, I'm like, where are we going with this? All right, you you're only showing us what we can Google out, but when he's out and about, what is he really doing? He even posts some silly shit about how to become a billionaire at 87. Like, dude, what what is the issue here? So I don't know. I I put it up there for y'all to basically go and see what he's all about. I don't know. About 10. Uh, basically, try to see uh, what he's all about. What he's uh, got under his belt. What he's going to be producing for the la latter part of the year. You know, I'm like, this is too much. It's only surface shit that they're putting out on him. Not nothing that's like, ooh, we really need to go and patron his business or we need to go and um follow him in a sense where i want to emulate myself after him no it's nothing like that at all so we'll give him a shout out when he's definitely trying to uh show us that he's trying to have some notoriety about himself but you're gonna have to open up a little bit more than just simco petroleum uh, that little staple you're giving us. Because what Sim Cold Petroleum got to do with you housing all these multi-million dollar cars? You know, what what does that have to do with that? Because that's what you're showcasing. You're saying you're a car enthusiast. But uh, how are you making your money to afford these cars? And why are you using your home as a parking lot to house these cars? You know, these are the questions we want to know. And... I'm sure they're going to go unanswered because you don't want to open up enough. That's why Portia's never going to necessarily be successful with you. Because she's trying to have her life as an open book. And showing her comings and goings. Which she was taping on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. They were actually following her. They were actually going to different things uh, that were showcasing her. But what are you doing, Simon, to try to get them to follow you? Are you just wanting to, what do you call it, uh, ride off her coattails until you can't ride off them anymore? Because Simply Buckhead couldn't write up that much about you, uh, my dear. Because you weren't trying to let them know anything about you. So you see how that goes? To get a complete, you know, review of somebody and trying to showcase them... They have to know a little bit about you, dear. Right? You, you really don't want them to do anything. But you want that check behind your name as a verified celebrity. But you're not a celebrity either. So I'm not really sure of what Portia is trying to do with you. Or what her team is trying to make you come out and seem like. It's very confusing. Very, very confusing. But, you know, like I said, I wanted to um, shout him out because he's doing a little something in the community, I'm guessing. And you can go and read the article that was put out on him, if you like. Because <laughs> Marlo Hampton, you know, she don't have all that money, but she dresses like she do. She was also featured in Simply Buckhead. All right. So it's not on, I mean, if you go out there and do something, you can um, go and approach these magazine companies to do a spread on you. And if they find you somewhat interesting, um, they would definitely put you on. But um, 
we can just go on and read what they kind of wrote up about Simon just to pass the time away. Um, it was Michael Jacobs, I guess, was the guy who came out and interviewed Simon uh, for the spread they gave to him because he made payment to them allegedly to do this feature story on him but it goes in to say simon gubadia loves the luxury or the luxury of the latest european cars perhaps it's no surprise that a man engaged to a porsche like car steel simco petroleum founder simon gubadia the fiance of real housewives of atlanta alum porsche williams takes auto enthusiasm to an extreme you see what i'm saying in that just short little paragraph how many times did they mention portia meaning they don't give a shit about you simon they really don't um this may help with some of your notoriety you're trying to promote for yourself but see you're still having have to be addressed where your girlfriend comes before you okay that's a sad way of existing you and todd really need to get y'all on and do your own thing and we're gonna put scammer shaba in that same boat of you know needing to pull up on your own merits but anyway going back to the article it says his current collection is worth upward of two million three rolls royces a phantom a Cullinum and a don a ferrari 812 gts a coachman uh, a Mach 2 custom band, a Mercedes AMG S63, and a Cadillac Escalade. I just love them, Cabadia says. I love the history around certain vehicles, whether they're Italian or British or German. He doesn't love them forever. His oldest is a 2018 because he always finds a more appealing vehicle coming down the production line. If it's the peak of European style, power, and luxury, and is among no more than 3,000 worldwide, it revs the body is motor. His bucket house has limited car space, so anything new usually drives something out. Women usually drives something old out as a trade-in. Gabadia doesn't race cars, but he sprints to the front to place pre-production orders and enjoys the 800 horsepower propelling his S63, his everyday car, from 0 to 60 in under 3 seconds. No one else in the family drives his cars. Mmm, interesting. Not his five children and not Williams, for whom he bought her own Rolls Royce Ghost. Because he owns a limited number of cars and doesn't buy them as an investment, Gabadia considers himself an enthusiast rather than a collector. I've just been privileged to own them. SimonGabadia.com What kind of bullshit is that? Y'all see what I'm saying? Man, really? Well, what do your children own that you paid for as an automobile? It ain't got to be all of that because I, I agree they need to work towards that type of lifestyle. But what cars did you give them? That's a still top caliber. Why are you sitting up here talking about you call yourself a car enthusiast and you let no one drive your car? So I'm like, huh. Ah. And I guess that's why it was so simple. But, you know, doing the publishing thing, they give you the magazine, their mission, their team. It tells a little bit more about the magazine itself. Okay. Like I said, that was a little fluff story. We really didn't need to hear it. But maybe Portia got tired of Simon asking her to help him, you know, get his check on Instagram, the little blue check as a certified person as he has such wealth, this, that, and third because Nene's uh, boyfriend has it. And I'm like, oh, I can see them being, you know, uh, just like little kids. Well, I can't have it. He got it. Can't you help me? What did she do to got him? To, you know, I could see him whining like that all day, every day. But like I said, we need you to do stuff on your own and be notarized. Be no, what do you call it? Uh, so we can, what is the word? I almost forgot the word, y'all. So he can stand out on his own merits, I guess I'm trying to say for lack of a better word. So we can know what he put out there. That his children and their children leave as a legacy. That say their grandpa, their dad did this. Okay. 
but you can't say that because he's uh, coasting off the notoriety of Portia and uh, Portia has to get him deals and have to get him shown in the community because he's not a hustler he don't go out there and let people know what he do what he do for the community and how he has established himself in Georgia as a residence and what he's doing to promote uh, some type of stability or some type of uh, uh, community service where he's having, you know, what do you call it, uh, underprivileged children or some type of charity. He should have a foundation, I guess that's what I'm trying to say. If he has that type of millions or billions, he should have a foundation that supports a, a cause that he believes in that has definitely been a part of the world or our state. Homelessness is a good one. Uh, illnesses that's dealing with children, like the Cancer Research Foundation or the Diabetes um, Foundation, uh, you know, something that's dear to his heart, or autism, you know, um, the spectrum of some kids that are diagnosed with, you know, uh, bipolar or some type of uh, disorder or uh, anything dealing with autism, he should be supported. And then with him doing that and um, founding a foundation, people will gear to him and his name will start to come out as, you know, someone to reckon with, someone to, you know, uh, research a little bit more, someone to do business with in the future because he has this foundation he's coming out with trying to work for a cause that he's find very near and dear to his heart and he's going to get that type of exposure and that's good exposure people love to be interviewed about what they do and how they're helping the community and how they're helping society grow positively you see what i'm saying but he he just want the limelight that's all he want he want to drink smoke and be around the rappers uh the music people and you know just stuff like that so either way he got recognized whether he bought the recognition or not we salute him on I know being featured in um, simplybuckhead.com. Okay, but that's all I have for this particular video. I will see y'all on the next one. Bye bye.